please consider joining the Patreon, where you'll get early access to my sound fonts and sample packs, previews of what I'm working on, and access to a private Discord channel. Hey everyone, it's Soundfont Guy. It's been a busy month since the Bomberman 64 video. Between work, commissions, the contest, and developing sound fonts, I've been very occupied. That said, there's a bunch of new stuff available in the shop now, including sound fonts inspired by Silent Hill 2, Ridge Racer Type 4, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, and even Shenmue. I make a lot of these, so remember to check periodically for more new stuff. My sound fonts and sample packs always have a free version available so you can build a library of diverse instruments inspired by your favorite games without ever having to spend a penny. All right, let's move on to the video. Today I want to talk about the music and samples of Mischief Maker! Mischief Makers, or UK UK Troublemakers, is a peculiar 2D platformer developed by Treasure, published by Enix, and released on the Nintendo 64 in 1997, which was a huge year for video games, and the greatest movie of all time, Batman and Robin. What? What can I say about this game that hasn't already been said by now? It used to be a hidden gem, but it's not so hidden anymore, you know? It's very weird. Maybe not the weirdest game you've ever played, but definitely an oddity. I was very young when this game came out, and I found it extremely difficult at the time. Apparently, I still do. However, I could not deny its appeal. I loved how it looked, how it felt, and of course, how it sounded. I played many hours of Mischief Makers. I even tricked my little sister into playing with me by convincing her it was a sequel to Yoshi's Story. Sorry, sis. Any excuse to play this game was good enough for me, and I didn't care who I had to hurt to make it happen. Yeah! Largely due to, well, you can probably guess, yeah, it's the music. I love the music in this game. It's delightfully quirky, it's catchy, and despite its overall weirdness, never once fails to convey the feeling that it aims to. The soundtrack was composed by Norio Hanzawa. If you recognize the name, it's probably because of his work on Gunstar Heroes, which is kind of legendary among retro game fans. But the music of Mischief Makers is quite a departure from the action-packed jams of Gunstar Heroes and its sequels. Instead, Hanzawa opts for quirky melodies, complex rhythms, and some of the most bizarre instrument samples with a focus on strange and spooky vocals. Let's start with an easy one. This track is called Steppin' and plays on the stage select screen. Pretty simple, right? There's not a whole lot to say about this song, but I feel it deserves some love. We hear mostly synth strings at first in a simple beat, then it evolves a bit and we get a French horn and a weird choir sample. The rhythm of this track is somewhat unique if you listen to the percussion. This passes the vibe check for sure. I definitely feel like I'm gearing up to go on a super weird adventure. 
This is our first taste of the strange instrument samples used throughout the entirety of the Mischief Maker soundtrack. It might not seem that weird to you yet, but give it time. Moving on, let's listen to Hurry, which is often thought of as the theme of Clan Ball Land, though it plays in a lot of other levels as well. Right out of the gate, there's a great hook. It sounds like a blend of orchestra hits, electric guitars, and something kind of choiry. Then we get into the next part of the song, which has a cool rhythm. Honestly, this song is a banger, but it's hard to put a finger on exactly why that is. It has a lot of variation. Each section is almost its own song, complete with a bass line that, wow, that bass is going nuts. Do you hear that? Yeah, the samples here are a combination of slap bass, synth strings, distorted guitar, French horn, orchestra hit, power drums, and some of those weird vocal choir samples I mentioned before. On paper, this track is just so weird. It just has no business being this good, but somehow it works. It's definitely giving creepy, ghost face amusement park vibes. So yeah, job well done, Norio. For our third and final example, I've chosen the track OUT. This plays when you fight mini-bosses, and thank god for that, because if I heard this at literally any other point in the game or in my life, I'd panic and quit. Okay, let's see if I can break this down. The song starts with some really chaotic melody, if you can call it that, followed by those strange choir samples again. Then just before we get to the meat of the song, we're graced with the sound of Sonic charging up his spin dash. 
At this point, we're grooving. More weird vocal samples, a four on the floor beat, pizzicato strings, and a sine wave. Yeah, lots of strange little hits. And then just before the loop, we're blessed with yet another strange utilization of bizarre choir samples. I mean, what is happening in this game's music? It's just so weird. It feels like we could step into a spooky survival horror scenario at any second. How did Norio Hanzawa come up with this stuff? What was his inspiration? Was it the weird ghostly faces on the characters? And on the environments? And on the buildings? Oh god, wait a second. Is this game actually just kinda creepy? Everything has a face. Could it be that these creepy, bizarre, spooky choir samples are meant to represent the many agonized, ghostly faces of the people and animals of this planet? Even the inanimate objects look like tortured souls. All right, maybe I'm overthinking this, but you can't deny how appropriate these samples feel for the environments in which Marina finds herself. I wanted to find the sources of these samples definitively so that you could all go look them up, but I'm nearly certain that they were all custom made for the purpose of this game. That said, I feel confident that most of them are Roland sound canvas patches, sort of layered over one another with pitch bending and other creative uses. But the Roland sound canvas is pretty tough to get your hands on through legal means, and even the software version was recently discontinued. Would you want to spend the time trying to recreate the samples in this game for use in your own music? Maybe, but probably not. But I did. Yep, I created a sound font and sample pack inspired by the wacky sounds of Mischief Makers. It's called Mischief Guy, and yes, it has weird choirs. As usual, this sound font does not contain anything from the game itself. All of these samples were built from the ground up using a combination of synthesis, public domain sounds, and effects. So I guess this is the part where I sum up my opinion, but I really just don't know what to say. I genuinely, truly love this game, not in spite of its bizarreness, but because of it. Those haunting faces are forever burned into my memory. I wish I had time to talk about the whole soundtrack, because there are some other pieces of music in there that go so hard, and some that really ramp up the creepiness too. But I really think if you haven't played it, you should discover its eccentricity for yourself. The game is worthwhile, and it really delivers in a lot of unexpected ways. Or you can just look up the soundtrack if you want to hear other stuff without having to play a very challenging and fun game. Hugest of shoutouts to my patrons. You folks are growing in number all the time, and I appreciate the support tremendously. Twilight Realm, Smiley, Selena, SampleTech64, McKay Voiles, Justin Hawes, Erian, I hope I pronounced that right, Evan Troop, Ethan Isaiah Kirchner, Elias Aseri, Devox, Drew Doodle, Cryonic Sage 7719 and Dean. Wow, this list is getting huge. Thank you all so much for the support. Remember to swing by the coffee shop for lots of sound fonts and sample packs inspired by our favorite games. And join the Discord server where we talk music, sound design, and host fun contests. Thanks for watching. See you next time.